guys, Kevin Thomas here, On Point Dogs, checking in today from Berks County, Pennsylvania. By the way, that would be the land where America begins. And we're continuing our work with Chris, the Doberman Pincher. Today we're going to give you a three-week update of where he is. I remember this guy had no obedience and uh, was a notorious leash push, notorious leash puller. So the goal with him was to walk, be able to walk the dog with two fingers. In the park, I let him pull me as much as he wants to. Uh, the first week, what we did is he was allowed to pull me leaving his house in the park, in the mountains, and on the way back. The second week, he was only allowed to pull on the way back. So on the sidewalk, leaving his house to our destination, he was not allowed to pull. This week, he was only allowed to pull once we hit either the park, the forest, or the mountains. Other than that, he had to be right at my side on a strict heel position. So the goal was to get him to be able to walk him with two fingers so today I'll demonstrate walking him with uh, one finger only. And this is something that we use when we're walking on the sidewalks in the residential neighborhoods. Again, in the parks and things like that, I try to give him as much freedom as he has earned, which at this point, he's able to go on a 20 foot, uh, a 20 foot leash. Okay, so you notice right now that I have two leads on the dog, and these are leads that are made for horses. Neither one of these are made for dogs. And the reason I prefer these is because they give an extra level of control. The bad part is that they don't have a handle on them like a leash would have it. So you have to wrap it around your hand. And for this dog, because of his pulling, I wear this glove to prevent a rope burn. And then on the left hand, where I secondary support. You know, I wear these fingerless uh, weight training gloves. So, <clears throat> again, this is maximum control when walking on the sidewalk through a residential neighborhood. And I'm justified in asking him to stay close to me like this because we're in the parks and we're in the free areas. You know, he has a, he has a lot of freedom. So, we take this one off. Okay, so the final level before taking off all of the uh, leashes, I'll show you that now the way I do it one finger in the prong collar. You see that? So if I need to do a correction, add just to a slight motion like this. Okay. So let's see how that looks. Wait. So there's nothing really magical about this. Really all credit is due to the prong collar. And so those of you that are reluctant to use the prong collar and you have a large breed protection dog, I mean a dog that is naturally protective such as uh, Connie Corso, German Shepherd if you get it from a good bloodline, and Doberman Pinchers, and you're saying, oh, you don't want to use a prong collar because you have a lot of uh, misinformed opinions about it. I say that's irresponsible dog ownership. When I'm walking this Doberman Pinscher down the sidewalk, even though he's only eight months old, a lot of people are afraid of him. And when they act afraid, that makes the dog suspicious. And once the dog becomes suspicious, he's gonna alert on the person, and that could even blow up and become worse because then the person could back up, stumble, fall, which is gonna bring out the dog's own, well, prey drive even more. Not that I'm gonna let the dog get to the person. But again, it's just an example of what can happen when you're not being a responsible dog owner. So again, if you want maximum control over your large breed protection dog, I mean protective, protection would mean after the training, but naturally protective. It has nothing to do with training, it has everything to do with bloodline and genetics. So this is the way you get that control. You just saw me walk this notorious leash puller where the owners couldn't even walk the dog. Um, for all intents and purposes, they couldn't walk the dog. Take him out on the sidewalk, a couple of steps, the dog, the dog is pulling like crazy. So we went from that now to being able to walk the dog with one finger. So after you see something like this and you decide, oh no, I'm going to go back to my way using a, a, a tiny collar and a thin leash, well, then the consequences are on you, so just be ready to accept the consequences.
Do you see? Go boys. Yes. Here we go. Good boy. Do you see? Yes. Do you see? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Here. Good boy. Fall in. Fall in. Fall in. Fall in. Yes, good boy. Uh, basically, in terms of the basic obedience program, which is on leash obedience, I mean, he's done very well with it. Um, my initial assessment of his prey drive was that his prey drive was low, but medium to low, but actually, I mean, his prey drive is high because when confronted with an actual prey animal, squirrels and birds, I mean, he, he comes to life. So as we move forward into more advanced work, it's a matter of transferring that prey drive from actual prey animals to um, to the bite toys. Energy, I had him pegged as a high energy dog. In reality, he is a medium energy dog, but he was a medium energy dog that wasn't receiving sufficient exercise. So a medium energy dog with all that pent up energy will present as if he is high energy. So in reality, um, he's medium energy. Uh, there have been some complaints about his behavior around the house, that he's a little bit too rambunctious, he was getting into plants and things like that. So today we'll simulate a home environment. We'll actually not simulate a home environment, we'll be in a home environment. And you'll see there will be plants all over the place, slippers on the floor, shoes on the floor, socks, on one of my kids' socks on the floor. And I mean, you'll see that he's, you know, he's quite fine here, so environment makes a difference. Uh, what you allow and don't allow the dog to do, how you make corrections, if you're making corrections at all, and then the energy that you're projecting around the house. Okay, so. Woo! Ah, the title! The title, yeah! Good boy! Come on! Yeah! Good boy! The title, yes! Ah, yes! Oust! Uh huh! The title, good boy! Yes! So now we're at the point with the basic tracking where I can actually put the food out of his line of vision and he'll find it, yeah, he'll find it. But um, yeah, he's still got, we've still got some work to go as far as that goes. Wait. 
Find it. So this is a high value reward. This is chicken. And as far as uh, treats go, I always use human grade food. I never use the stuff that is 90% sugar that they sell at the stores. Find it. Find it, yes. Yes. Find it. Find it. Yes. Very good, yes. I don't see the sign up link for Bit Petite. Where can I find it? Um, I haven't put Bit Petite in, in Are You Yet. I just did a training uh, page for people that are trading. Um, so, after this webinar, I will add, because I actually met you before, I've got a copyright here on my desktop. Um, give me like 20 minutes after this webinar, and the link will be in here. And it'll be under um, the training center and Bit Petite. And 